All right, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for another video. This time, we're going to do the video on the Passover slash the Last Supper, or what you might call the Lord's Supper, so they say. Um, we're going to go to the truth of this now. As promised in the last video, I just did the uh, the resurrection deception. And I hope y'all saw in that video that it was the truth. I went through all four Gospels. And I showed you. All four are totally different. So how in the world can you tell me or ask me, do I believe in the resurrection of Christ? Oh, you don't know that. I mean, today I walked by a car and we was out walking our dogs and, and somebody on the back of the car, Jesus saves. I'm like, how does Jesus save? See, people believe that he resurrected. But y'all don't understand that. And I will do, like I said, I'm gonna have to do the salvation video as well, but today will be the Passover. And hopefully I might have something else to put in there too to show y'all even more. So far, everything about the New Testament has been false. Okay? And I'm using the Bible alone. I mean, well, I actually took y'all, I'm going to take y'all to a couple other places, but but for the, for the most part, I'm using the Bible on the Bible to show you uh, the, or the so-called Holy Scriptures versus the New Testament showing you that it's false. And the question is, why haven't your pastor showed you this? Going to church every Sunday, Hooping and hollering, making the songs about this guy, this character. Everybody's loving him. And they don't even know why. The pastor get up there, read a couple of verses, and then start telling the story. They never put anything in the context. You know? Never, never, never in context what it should be. Never where it should be. And like I said, this Friday is Good Friday. As y'all know, that's, the, that's supposed to be the day that Christ, um, that Christ rose from the dead. I mean, excuse me, was was buried, was uh, crucified, and was buried. Right, that's that's what's coming up this week, and then, like I said, no matter what, no matter how many videos people put out, no matter how much truth people go still go show up to church, and and the, the thing about it is, we're trying to wake you up from the lie. But people get mad at the person who's trying to wake them up from the lie. I didn't lie to you. I'm trying to open your eyes to the lie. And I'm showing you plainly. And yet people get mad at the messenger. Somebody told me, one of the, uh, some, somebody I told me, he said, yeah, you know, down soft, man, they're going to give you a lot of pushback. One of the brothers told me that. If, I, if I'm saying what I'm saying. And I'm saying, saying, I said, that's the ignorance of them then. That's what I'm talking about. You fighting, you want to fight me or get upset with me because I'm the one that's showing you the truth. And, that's, and I'm not saying that, not just me. There's a lot of other people who've been doing this and trying to show this truth for a long time. I'm just trying to break it down my way to show it to you easier. Instead of just talking it out, I'm showing it to you. I'm going to the book because somebody told me once, he said, he told me that I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see nothing outside the Bible. You can't show me from the Bible. He didn't want, they didn't want nothing from the outside world, you know, proving that it wasn't, you know, what it said it was. But so now I'm doing that. I can go to the outside world and pull a whole bunch of other stuff in here too. And uh, it'll make the video real long, but <laughs> It'll still be the truth. I'm still going to show you the truth. No matter what, it's going to be the truth. And today, we will be doing the Passover, and I'm going to start out with the Holy Scriptures. I don't really like saying Old Testament, but I have to say it because some people wouldn't know what I'm talking about. So I have to start out there first, and I'm going to show you, and we're going to read it together. What is the Passover? Okay. We're going to read together what is the Passover. We're going to read the ordinances, ordinances of the Passover. So that way you'll clearly see before we go to the New Testament, then your eyes should be open. Okay, see this? 
your eyes should be open. But some of y'all gonna catch y'all feelings. Y'all gonna get mad, upset. Just call me a blasphemer, call me all kind of other names, whatever. I don't care though. Call me whatever you want. Because I know I'm standing with the truth right here. Because I'm showing it to you, I'm reading it to you. Word for word. The question is, who wrote that over the other side? That should be your problem. Because that's what you believe in. It. Because that's what you've been taught. Like I said in the last video, this, the Christians came to America. And they set up their system and their God and their churches everywhere. Everywhere you see a cross, I don't care what denomination you call yourself, you're serving Christ. And they don't even believe all the same. That's why they got different denominations. But I'm here to show you this is all false and that our people was not doing this. And not just our people, I'm trying to wake everybody up. I don't care if you're black, white, blue, green, or yellow. People tell me, oh, yeah, Yeshua. Well, we go with the black Yeshua or, or Yeshia or Yahushua or whatever. I don't care if you give them the J, the Ys, whatever. It's still the same stories. You got four Gospels. Four. These are the only things concerning Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, what Bible, whatever you go to, you could, these are the four things concerning the resurrection. Outside of the Bible, it don't exist. So I went to the place where they found it at, and I proved it. Over, I did the virgin birth. I did the Messiah. I even did the one about praying, praying over your food. Go check that video out. I did the one on the Christmas tree. And I went factually to the book. So by now, at this point, you know I'm coming with the truth again, because I will, and I am, and I'm about to. All right, so here we go. I'm starting out. Oh, I'm starting out in the Holy Scriptures first. Okay, I might ex I'm gonna put an explanation point on some of the stuff we go through. We're gonna read it. So then, when we get on the other side, you can clearly see. And Christ didn't come to fulfill with with, with so called the Most High. He did everything against the Most High. He went everything against the Most High. And he defiled his holy days. Talking about because he's here. No. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. He defiled it. All right, so let's get over here. And uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get rid of me. And from this point on, and maybe till the end of the video, we're going to go to the real deal. We're going to get into it now. All right, so y'all, stay tuned. All right, y'all, so today we're going to start out in the book of Exodus, chapter 12. So I hope y'all can see my screen. Get ready, because this is the Truth Seeking Network. All right, let's get it. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Now, I'm going to say most high. I'm going to read it as it is. I'm not going to use my other terminology just, just to let y'all know. And if I might slip up and do it. But other than that, I'm going to try to keep it as it is in the book so y'all can understand it. Because I know it's a lot of people who will not understand if I start talking another way. I'm just going to read it, try to read it as is. But I might use the most high instead of the Lord or something like that. Okay. Anyway, let's get going. And the Most High spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And it and if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out of from the sheep or from the goats. Now, when are they going to do that? On the 10th day of the month. Now notice what 
This says, this shall be the first day of the year unto you. Okay? So hold this. And I'm going to go to Deuteronomy. Okay? Deuteronomy. Oops. Deuter. Chapter 16. I'm going to get a little clarification on this first day of the year. It says, observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of the Egypt by night. Okay, you see that? It was the month of Abib. And the Most High said, this is the first the first, this is the first month of the year unto you. So my question to the Christians is, why are we celebrating, uh, why are we celebrating the, the month, the first month of the year in January? Can y'all answer that question? See? Let me show y'all something. And I showed this in my last, one of my other videos too. When was the new year changed, right? When was the new year's change in January? You see that? January the 1st, 1752. The change was made in two steps. December the 31st, 1751 was followed by January the 1st, 1752. Okay? Now we're going to see. See? When was the new year changed? Now we're going to go here. I'm going to show y'all something else. Okay. Hold on one sec. All right. All right, that's what I wanted to see. Y'all see this? Change of the 1752, the Julian calendar was replaced by the Gregorian calendar, changing the formula for calculating leap years. The beginning of the legal new year was moved from where? March 21st to January the 1st. Finally, 11 days were dropped from the month of September 1752. So Christians and pastors, why are y'all not following the scriptures? Why are you celebrating the pagan new year on January the 1st? I mean, you said you claim y'all read the Bible. But in the month of Abib is around March to April in that time frame. The time when the green ears, the coin come up, Right. When things come back to life, as we see now. Um, by the way, y'all, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. Now is the new year. Look out your window. Now you see the, the, the birds, the bugs. You see the plants, the flowers, the pollen. Everything is coming back to life. Now you see, you're actually seeing a change in the year. Right? You're seeing a change. On January the 1st, there's no change. And also a day don't start at midnight. That was another change that they did. They started a day at midnight. So like, again, I said this in another video. How do you say it's midnight, good morning, at the same time? It doesn't even make sense. We know that morning starts when the sun comes up. That starts morning, don't we? No, we don't. And yet all the churches celebrate New Year's on January the 1st. And the Most High clearly told you that. It's in the month of a bee. It shall be the first year. And we know that's in March, between March and um, April. Okay? 
So I just wanted to show y'all that real fast. Why are you not celebrating the new year now? Why are you following the system, the world system, and following it, doing the pagan thing? It's paganism. Now tell me I'm wrong with that. Anyway, so let's get back over to Exodus chapter 12. Just wanted to show y'all that real quick. So why are we not doing what we're supposed to be doing, church? But you know what? The word church and the word Sunday is nowhere in the so-called Old Testament. You won't find it. Nowhere in the Old Testament. Church or Sunday. You will find Sabbath day. All right. So let's get back over. Number verse five again. Your, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats, and ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So when are they going to kill a sacrifice, y'all? This is crucial. They're going to kill the sacrifice in the evening. Are they eating the sacrifice in the evening? No. They're going to kill it in the evening. Remember I said this. Okay? Or remember we read this. I didn't say it. I'm reading it. And they shall, they're going to keep, they're going to, they're going to pick it out on the 10th of the month, a male without blemish, right? And then on the 14th, they're going to keep it till the 14th day of the month. And on the 14th day of the month, in the evening, they're going to kill it. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on two posts, sides of the post. And the upper and the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. And listen, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. So how are they gonna eat this, y'all? This is crucial again. In that night, they're gonna roast it in that night with fire. Unleavened bread with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Listen to the next verse. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire. His head, his legs, and with pertinence thereof. That was the insides. Okay. And verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remaineth until of it until the morning shall burn with you shall burn with fire. So you're supposed to eat it all that night. If anything left in the morning, before the sun come up, you're supposed to burn it. Notice there's no wine. You're not dipping it in anything. It says without water at all. So this is like a fast, quick, and dry. And they shall eat it flesh that night, roast with fire. Unleavened bread, and unleavened bread, y'all, means that it has no yeast in it. It's not risen. It can't rise. It's not going to rise because they're making it in haste. That means they're making it fast. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head, his legs, and the, with the pertinence thereof. Okay. Now let's go to verse. So let's make that clear. I want y'all to understand what I'm saying when we read it. And thus shall, verse 11, and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet. That's very important again. Okay? That means you're not to take your shoes off. All right? And your loins, that means your clothes on, girded. Not taking your clothes off, your clothes are on. This is very important again. Remember I said this. Your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and ye shall eat it in haste. Just like I just said, it is the Lord's Passover. So what is this? The Passover. This is not the Feast of Unleavened Bread, y'all. And we're going to go through some verses to show you that. 
The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread are two different things. Okay? They're going to be on two different days. Now, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it by an ordinance forever. So the things what we just went over. The ordinance, this is the order of how it should be done should not be changed. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that show shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. So this is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, there should be a holy convocation. And the seventh day, there should be a holy convocation. So on the first day and on the seventh day, you got a holy convocation to you. No matter of work shall be done in them, say which every man must eat, that only be must be done. Okay? So they're going to have a convocation. Now, a convocation is when they all sit assemble together and they're going to have a, have a feast together. Not church. This is assembly of the people. A holy convocation. Okay? Save that which, say, save that which every man must eat that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in the self same day that I brought you armies out of the land of Egypt, therefore I shall observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, ye shall eat unleavened bread until one in the twentieth day of the month at evening. In seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened. Even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened, and all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take your, you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two sides of the post, the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the doors of the house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite and say what he say, and none of you shall go out your houses until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And we hear, when you see it, the blood upon the lintel, on the two sides of the post, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And see, they weren't supposed to come out the house. That's be part of the, that should be part of the ordinance as well. And it shall come to pass when ye come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he promised that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? Then ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the whole houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed down the head and worship. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote at the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the first of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. 
And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where the Lord was not, excuse me, for where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, said, rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and your children of it, and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said, and take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And Egypt, and Egypt and the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we all be dead men. And the people took their dough before it was unleavened, before it was leavened, and they needing be, being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And the Lord was his clothing, and the Lord God gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And the mixed multitude went up with them, and the flocks and the herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened, bag, bread, uh, unleavened cakes of dough, which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt, could not tarry, but had they prepared for themselves, but neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. All right. So, okay, so I'm not going to read all of this. This kind of give you a gist. Y'all know what the Passover is, right? So that's when the Most High came and slew all the firstborn of Egypt, okay? So now we're going to get into some more ordinances of the Passover. We're going to go to different scriptures, and I'm pulling it out to show you. All right, y'all, so I'm in Leviticus 23, all right? And I'm going to read, start at the top. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, say, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts, okay? And the first one he does is sixth day, the Sabbath day, right? This is the Sabbath day. Okay, I'm not going to get into that one. I'm just showing y'all. Y'all can see my cursor. Y'all can read that, right? And it said, these are the feasts of the Lord, even the convocations that ye shall proclaim in their seasons, right? And then the next one, verse five. And the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. See that? So when is it? It starts the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. And look at it says, on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. And the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. See that? Therein. So, and this is the same thing we just read, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So you got two different feast days, right? You got the Passover on the 14th. And on the 15th day of the month starts the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So what comes first? The Passover is first. And remember, the Passover must be killed in the evening and then roasted by fire that night, right? And they told you how they should eat it with the loins on, girded, and the staff in the hand and the sandals on, right? And, um, this would be unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and roast with fire and not salted at all. No water, nothing, right? And made in haste. All right. So that's another one showing you the ordinances of the Passover. Okay, so I don't think I need to go over this again. It's just showing you the 14th day of the month when it's supposed to take place, just like it said earlier. All right? So it's the same. So basically, everything is consistent. All right, so now I'm in Numbers chapter 28. And I'm going to go to verse 16 and 17. And look, 
Now, so this is also showing this this chapter is showing different um holy days, but right here, and it says this, and in the 14th day of the first month, see the first month of the year is the Passover of the Lord. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast, seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Right? And it just basically says the same thing. The first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no manner of work. Then it just gives you the more information about what's going on in there, right? And then it tells you, and on the seventh day, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no Sabbath work. And then the next one is going into the first fruit. See, that's something different. But it's just showing you the different, um, the different um, holy days that the Most High had, right? But it's being consistent. The fourteenth day is the Passover. The fifteenth day of the, uh, the excuse me, the first uh, the first month of the year for them, which is a B, right? And on the fourteenth day, right, it's the Passover at evening, and then on the fifteenth day of the work, excuse me, of the month, the work <laughs> of the of the month is um, the feast of unleavened bread, and the first day is a what holy convocation. And on the seventh day, there will be a holy convocation. So it's consistent. All right. And that's Numbers chapter 28. Okay. All right. So now we're in Numbers chapter 9. And we we'll started from the top. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the 14th day of this month at evening, ye shall keep it as appointed season, according to all the rites of it, according to all the ceremonies thereof, ye shall keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at evening in the wilderness according to all the Lord commanded Moses so did the children of Israel so you see in Numbers 9 it's showing that the second year after they left out that they still kept the Passover and all the rites thereof of it all right so I'm just giving y'all more consistent verses to prove uh so because a lot of times I think a lot of times when we go to church we just go on Easter and nobody pays attention. We just kind of like listen to what the pastor says. And but nobody really goes over the the, the you know, you see the Ten Commandments that came out the movie, but nobody really actually goes over the ordinance and what they did and what they kept. Because most people, we kind of like we go here, then we go straight, they go straight to the New Testament. That's what they did in my church. So, and pretty much a lot of people you talk to, they say I have to say the same thing. But now we're actually getting it for real. I'm actually showing you the verses that's dealing with the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? So, y'all, I'm back in Exodus chapter 13, and I'm going to check this from the top. And this is more concerning the most, Moses speaking to the children of Israel about uh, the Passover, all right? And in the month that they came out of uh, the land of Egypt. Let's read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the month of Abib. See that? That's in the between March and April time frame. And y'all, this is the first month of the year. It also it coincides with spring when things come back to life. The earth know, the animals know. How come the people don't know when the new year starts? Why are you celebrating New Year's in winter when everything is dead? And, and furthermore, you're sitting there at the middle of night, in the middle, in the at midnight. You calling that a new year? Why the churches are not following the scripture? 
And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. See that? Seventh day thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. This is the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days. The first day of Holy Convocation, and on the last day, you're going to have a feast unto the Lord. It's a celebration. Unleavened bread, verse 7, shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in the day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be a sign unto thee upon thy head, hand, and for a memorial between thy eyes. That means in your mind, remember that the Lord, the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. And thou therefore shalt keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. Okay? So, and it's very clear. So I'm, if anybody hasn't done this before, y'all, I'm making it clear and I'm stressing it now in this video, okay? All right, so I'm back in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, and I'm going to read it from the top. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib did the Lord thy God bring thee forth out of Egypt by night. And don't y'all know that night don't end at midnight? Night, remember, they, they, in the evening they killed the Passover. And at night they roasted it and ate it. But night lasts until the sun comes up in the morning, which we call 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. That's what we call it now because they change times and laws. And most people don't get that. A, a day, uh, midnight did not start. Again, midnight was midnight. And that's when they brought them out in the middle of the night by haste. So they, were, they would eat the Passover. They was behind the doors, behind closed doors, where they struck the post with the blood of the lamb, not Jesus, y'all. We're gonna about to get over there in a minute. But and they struck both sides of the post, and the and the most high, they passed over. He sent the angel, the death angel, and he passed over those houses that had that mark. All right. So observe that month. And why so why are we not observing this month, y'all? Why are we not doing that? So I'm a, I, yeah, I said it before, and I just said it again. Pastors, why are y'all not doing this? Why are you following this system? Why are you following paganism? Anyway, thou shalt this, therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock of, and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread with therewith, even the bread of affliction. But thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no leaven bread be seen with thee in all thy coats seven days. Neither shall there any flesh of the flesh which thou sacrificed the first day at evening remain all night until the morning. Said it again. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover with any, and that excuse me, within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, but at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place His name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at evening. See, when are you gonna sacrifice the Passover, y'all? At evening, and the going down of the sun. At that season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. You can't get no clearer than this. 
and thou shalt roast, roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning, see, thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Six days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day, the solemn assembly of thy Lord, thy God, thou shalt do no work therein. Okay? So I'm going to stop this right here. And I'm gonna, I might do one more, and then I'm going to get into the New Testament. Okay? Just hold tight, y'all. We're about to see something. All right, y'all. So now we're in the New Testament. Now we in what's called, they say, the Lord's Supper. How many of you Christians out there knew that the when he said the Lord's Supper, this, this is actually the Passover? This is the this is supposed to be the Passover? Did y'all know that? Did y'all know this was the Passover that, that this so-called Last Supper was? And so we're going to read the Passover now or the Last Supper, as y'all call it. And we're going to see, or the Lord's Supper, they say, right? And this has nothing to do with the Lord's Supper at all. This is this is supposed to be the Passover. That the ordinance that we just read, that they were supposed to keep throughout their years and their generations, right? We just read all that. So I don't need to remind y'all, but I just did. <laughs> all right. So here we go. This is the first one in Matthew. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Cyphus, or Cyphus, or Cyphus, how y'all want to say it and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head. And as he sat at meat, now notice this is not, by the way, the day yet. This is the remember said after two days. Okay. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation. See who saw it? When his disciples, plural, saw it, they had indignation. They did, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them. Why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall all this this woman has done be told for a memorial to her, of her. Okay? That's what he said about this woman. Now, then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest. Now, y'all notice that he said he was talking about his burial. So, remember last week, uh, whenever I did the other video, I don't even know, probably, when I did the uh, the resurrection deception, Remember when we went to the book of John and it said, for they knew not the scriptures? Let's, let's just go there real quick. I'll come back here. I just want y'all to see something. And we'll come back. Let's go to John. The book of John. Mm. I think it's John 14. Let's see what it says. Okay. It's one more. 16, I think it was. Yeah, 16.
Okay, my bad. It's twenty. It's twenty. All right. Sorry for that, y'all. Took a little too much time. All right. Let's read this. Now I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna read it all. Just gonna show y'all real quick. And it says, and he, and he stooping down, looking in, saw that the linen clothes. He saw the linen clothes lying. Yet when he not in. Then came some of Peter. That was the other disciple, right? Then come Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and see the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was upon it, about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together by place by itself. Now, one thing I wanted to say last time, what happened to all that hundred pounds of spice that was wrapped? What happened to all that spice that was wrapped in there with him? Okay, that's a hundred pounds worth of spice. It must have been all everywhere. Anyway. Then went in also the other disciple, the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as they yet knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. And does that make sense again? Hmm? Does that make sense to y'all? Now, Jesus is with them now. Right? Jesus is with them right now. So how is it that they don't know the scriptures when Jesus just clearly told them about his death and burial, his burial and his resurrection? How did they not know the scriptures? So, like I said, this doesn't make sense at all. And I just want to go back over to Matthew now because I don't want to get caught back on this topic. Go back to Matthew 26. But I just wanted to, for people who didn't see the video, they may have not seen the video. Now, that's something for y'all to think about. How did they, how did disciples not know the scriptures that he should rise again? That doesn't even make sense. All right. Here we go. So when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but with me, you have not always. For in that she poured the oint this ointment on my body, she did it to my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel is preached in the whole world, there shall also this woman have, with, with have done be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, what will you give me? And 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 I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted it with him for 30 pieces of silver. So when did this take place? This take place after that she did, she poured the ointment. According to Matthew, that is, to the book of Matthew, this happened that day after she poured that ointment. All right? That that's when Judas sought to betray Jesus, according to Matthews, that is. Keep that in mind. And from that time, he sought to, an opportunity to betray him. From when? From after she poured that ointment. He wanted to betray him. Now, here we go. So this is futuristic. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Okay, stop right there. Stop the press. Do y'all see the problem? Hmm? Christians, do you see the problem? Now, the first day of the Feast of Eleven Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Because y'all know what? That the Passover... Is when on the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Passover, and on the 15th day of the month is the Feast of Eleven Bread. So let's get that. Let's go to Leviticus. I'm not going to do them all. Thus, 23. Just for the people who were in the back of the room that don't want to see this. Let's get it. Now, this is talking about concerning the feast days. I'm going to start at the top. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and saying concerning unto them concerning the feast 
of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Whose feast? The most highest. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. So that's the, that's the weekly Sabbath, right? Look at the next one. These are the feasts of the Lord, even a holy convocation, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, in the first one, they start out with this. And the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. Y'all see this? And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. I'm going to stop it right there. You see my cursor. So when is so what comes first? The Passover. Okay? The next day on the 15th is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I should not have to do that but one time to show y'all that. Now let's go back to Matthew. So who wrote Matthew, y'all? Was it the Holy Spirit? Again, Matthew 26. Slide it down. Now, verse 17, what does this say again? Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Eh. Wrong. And he said, Go into the city so, to such a man and say unto him, the master says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, <clears throat> how did you eat at the evening, Jesus? When the Passover was just killed, or supposed to have been killed at the evening. You can't eat the Passover and kill the Passover at the same time unless you want to eat it raw. Y'all see the lies? How come your church never showed you this? But I'm showing you. He sat down with the 12. And as they did eat, he did said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Oh, hey. Stop right there. Wrong, Jesus. You supposed to be keeping the ordinance and your disciples of the Passover. What, what dish did you dip? Huh? You supposed to be eating bitter herb you're supposed to be following the ordinances of the Passover. Am I right? So how did you dip anything in anything? Because this was supposed to be kept year after year according to them and your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, right? Because it was everything was supposed to be done in haste. And you're supposed to be keeping the ordinance of your father if he's your father. The son of man goeth, number, verse 24, the son of man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man that he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of my, the New Testament, which is, and, wrong answer, Jesus. When was the fruit of the vine at the Passover? When did somebody have time to make grape juice or wine at the Passover? That's not part of the Passover, y'all. Nowhere did we read anywhere about the fruit of the vine at the Passover. 
or anything anybody dipping in anything at the Passover. All right, let's keep reading. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for me for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink him for of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it and new and with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into my, so, so, hold on, say, 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 you're not supposed to go out, Jesus. Because you're supposed to have been in it all that night. Okay. Now, the only reason they went out at night in haste and noticed it was still at night because night still lasts until the sun comes up. They had time to eat. And then after they ate, they left in haste. So um, let's get back over to Exodus chapter 12 one more time, y'all. So those people who have short memories. I know some people have short memories. And they ain't going to remember what we read. And they're not going to want to go back and see it for themselves. So now just get it right here. Exodus 12. All right. And let's just start your lamb. So we noticed they got the lamb on the 10th day of the month, right? Let's see. All right, right here. Speaking to the children of Israel, the congregation of Israel, saying that the tenth day of this month, they shall take them, every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for the house. I'm not going to read this one. I'm just going to skip down. The lamb should be without blemish, a male first year. You shall take it from the sheep, from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the month, the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. That means everybody is going to kill their lambs in the evening. And they shall take the blood of it and strike in the side posts upon the doors of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Did you hear the fruit of the vine anywhere, y'all? Anybody dipping anything, anything? Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at, at, at all with water. But roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And ye, ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth until the morning shall be burnt with fire. This is how you shall eat it. Thus ye shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Y'all got that? So clearly, everything they did in Matthew 26 was wrong. How did y'all not know this, pastors? Hmm? Y'all reading from the back of the book. And so they went out to the Mount of Olives. So I'm not going to get into it. It says Peter denied him, right? But, but he told them right here. Let's just show this real quick. Then it says Jesus unto them, all you shall be defending in me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But I am risen again and I will go before you in Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended of thee, yet I will not be offended. So Peter knew what Jesus said. Remember what I just read in John? It was Peter and that other disciple. It said in there that they didn't know the scriptures. But the disciples didn't know the scriptures. That's what it said. Go back and look at it. Now let's go to the one in Mark. Shall we? I think it's Mark 14. I might be wrong. Let's see. Okay. Mark 14, y'all. After two days with the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. So they got that right. Passover first and unleavened bread. All right. And the chief priests and the scribes thought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon, the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box, ointment, a, a speaker, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on the head 
on, on his head, Jesus' head. And they were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why is this waste of this ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? Or why ye trouble ye her? Yeah, she has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. Whensoever ye will may do to them good. But me, ye have not always. She had done that which she could. She come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the world, whole world, this also shall be had done, shall be spoken of the memorial to her. And Judas, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give money, him money, and he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Now listen, y'all. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover. Okay. Y'all got that? I'm not going back. You go back. The first day of unleavened bread, they don't kill the Passover, do they? The Passover is killed in the evening, and it's called the Passover. <laughs> the first day of unleavened bread starts on the 15th of the first month of the year. So y'all got that, Christian. His disciples said unto him, wherewith thou that we may go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover. So he got the same thing going on. And he sent forth his disciples and said unto them, Go ye into the city, and there ye shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go, say unto the good man of the house, The master, where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat did as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, See, I'm not gonna go over the ant and all that stuff no more. <laughs> Y'all got it now, right? You know the Passover was killed in the evening. So you can't sit and eat at the time the Passover was killed. Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to sing unto one him by one by one. Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he said unto, said, it, said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. So you know they ain't going to be dipping in the dish. Okay? That's not part of the ordinances of the Passover. Son of man, this, verse 21, The son of man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but one to that man whom the son of man betrayed, goeth good were it that that man had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank. And he said unto them, This is my blood, the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink the new kingdom. And they had sung us him, and they went out in the Mount of Olives. And so you got the same story pretty much right here, right? So so you know, pretty much you got the same thing going on. And, and I'm not going to do that. Like I said, all that, they got it wrong. So that's two books of the Bible, of the New Testament. They got it wrong again. All right. So let's go to Luke. The 12th. Let's see. Let's see. No, that was that was John. Let's get to the fourteen. Yep. Here we go. All right. Ah. Uh. I don't know why I had to skip through that. 
I've been doing this for so long. Okay, let's get this one. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Y'all see that's wrong again? Is the Feast of Unleavened Bread called the Passover? No, it's not. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the Passover comes before the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Again, the Passover is on the, four, the first month, on the 14th day of the month, and it's that evening when you shall kill the Passover. And on the 15th day of the month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There shall be no leaven found in, in all your, in your houses. And on that first day is a holy convocation. And on the seventh day is a holy convocation. Okay? Y'all got that. All right. Let's keep reading. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then into Satan, into G Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Okay, so right here, um, so this is when supposedly Satan entered Judas, right? They're not eating yet, y'all. It's not after dinner. He, all three said well, pretty much the same thing, but this one says Satan entered him. Okay, the other two just said he went out to sought after the alabaster jar, right? Uh, thing that he went out to go sought to kill, uh, portray Jesus. And this one's saying that Satan entered him right here. And he went in his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Okay, see? All right. So now we at the Passover. And again, and we all know, if y'all read y'all scriptures now, y'all know that the Passover is not killed at the day of unleavened bread. And unleavened bread starts on the 15th. That feast is on the 15th. All right? So they got it wrong, y'all. So what are we following? I just did the, I did the virgin birth. I did who's the Messiah. I showed y'all praying over your food. I did the Christmas tree. I did a few more other ones. I can't even remember, but now I'm doing all these scriptures and I'm showing you there's nothing in the New Testament that has been correct so far. And yet everybody's in church following this. Why? Let's keep reading. Um, wow, I'm just it just it just amazes me that while while we want to believe a lie when somebody's telling you the truth, and the person that's telling you the truth, you don't want to listen to, and the person is making it plain to you. And you still weren't going to hold on to the lie. So anyway, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wert thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water, follow him in the house where he hath entered in. And ye shall... Say unto the good man of the house, the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there make you ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them with with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat no more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God should come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. See, this ordinance right here, y'all, 
It's supposed to be doing remembrance of the most high. So this is against the most high. Do y'all understand this? This is the time that they were supposed to remember when the most high uh, went against Pharaoh with a strong hand. And this is supposed to be remembrance unto them, not remembrance of Jesus. He's coming to take the place of the most high. Can't y'all see this? It's very clear. Now you're saying this whole thing, this whole Passover, now it's because, of, and y'all call it the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. See? Likewise, also the cup after the supper saying, this ain't no supper. This is the ordinance of the Passover, supposed to be, but they got it wrong again because they called it the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And they killed the Passover at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and that's not, that's all backwards. Can't y'all see what these people have done? They have misled you. Anyway, and he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, this during remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But, but, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth at and it was determined, but one to the man by whom he has betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them that it should betray to do this thing. And there, there was also so a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And I'm not going to get into all that. Okay? So I'm just showing you the same uh things that's going on but you can see that the truth of the passover and of the first day of the year and all that i just showed it to you and i'm showing you now that this is all backwards okay okay hold on that's the wrong one i'm gonna go here all right john 13 let's get john now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them until the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, that he, the son that he should betray him. Let me read that verse again. And supper being ended, shall they, to, they went to supper? Supper being ended. This wasn't just no supper, y'all. The devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So after supper ended, Jesus now, knowing that the Father had given all things in his hand, that he was come, that what he was come from God and went to God. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Hold up, wait a minute. What is Jesus doing? Now, y'all see already, right? We got a problem. This story is, right now, diverse more so than the others, right? We got, after supper, Judas is being entered by Satan. Then we got, huh, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments. Is that part of the ordinance of the Passover, y'all? And he took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Now, hold on. Is he not breaking the ordinance of the Most High's Passover? Wow. 
I mean, look at this, y'all. Let's go to Exodus 12. He wasn't supposed to take his sandals off. Not alone your garment. What are you doing, Jesus? Let's read that. I'm not going to read it all. Listen, y'all. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. The most high Passover. It belongs to him. Mm-mm-mm. Let me verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord, who the most high, throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. What is Jesus? Mm -mm -mm, y'all, and y'all following this? And y'all calling me a devil? Let's read some more. Wow. So let's read what Jesus did again. Jesus knowing that the Father had given him all things. Jesus, why you ain't following what the Father told you? He rises from the supper, not, not the ordinance, not the Passover, supper, and said, laid it aside his garments, took his garments off, and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So that means he was naked? He could, because he said he laid aside his garments, right? And took a towel and girded himself. So he took the towel and washed it around himself. And after that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Wow. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. And Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, Thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said unto him, He that washes indeed, he is washed, needed not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew he who should betray him. Therefore he said, He said, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, he had taken his garments and was set down again, and said unto them, Know ye not that I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for so am I. Mm -mm -mm. Now I notice he ain't say all this in the other ones, but let's keep going. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent me, that sent him. Yet know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not to you all. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before I, it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever and sinners receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, who sent you? By the way, I'm asking this question. Jesus, who really sent you? Because you're right. Whoever received you is also receiving the people who made you, who created you. That's going to be another video. Anyway. When Jesus had thus said, 
he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one to another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of the disciples who Jesus loved. I thought Jesus loved everybody. Simon Peter therefore beckoned on him, anyway, beckoned on him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, he it is whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. Oh, you got a sop and you're going to dip it. Oh. And when he dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Now, hold on, y'all. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do quickly. So after he gave him the sop, he entered in him. But y'all notice in the other gospels, after the lady had the alabaster jar, uh, excuse me, the alabaster jar of ointment that she she poured upon him, and the other ones that and that was before the feast day, that uh, he sought to betray Jesus. Then, but according to this one, after he gave him the sock, then Satan entered into Judas. See. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this of him. For some thought that because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, buy these things that we have need of against the feast. Or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. I'm sure it was. It had to be night if you're claiming that this was the Passover because but see, you're supposed to be eating in the Passover. Okay? You should have been roasting it in the evening. It should have been killed in the evening. But now is our night. So he, okay, it's night. Anyway, let's keep going. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. And if God be glorified in him, God shall glorify, glorify in himself and shall straightway glorify him. And now it's just going to go to a whole bunch of things where we created songs from. If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw them into me and all that. So I'm not going to get into all that. And now he's talking about the cock crow and all that. So y'all see this one was totally diverse than the next, than, than the last one, right? Than the last three, right? We got them eating supper. Jesus got a towel. He girding himself. He washing the feet. He doing all kinds of things, you know, that he should not be doing at the most high's Passover. But I want to show y'all something. Let's go to chapter 18 here. I want to show y'all something. We're going to start at the top. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe that not start at the top. Okay, let's just start at the top. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of Kedron, where the garden into the in which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew that place. For Jesus oft times re resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that I should that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They said unto him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto him, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And soon as then, as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. And what they trying to make y'all that Jesus says, I am. The Most High said he was, I am. So they trying to make y'all believe that, oh, that Jesus was like, 
they fell to the ground. But let's keep going. Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered it, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let those go, let these go on their way. And they said, saying, then the same might be filled, which he spake of them, that thou gavest me, have I lost none. I'm going to skip down. Let's keep going. I just want to get to the, the part. I started 15. No, I started 16. Peter, but Peter stood at the door without. Then went out the disciple, other disciple. There's the other disciple, by the way, y'all, which was known unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door and unto Peter, Art thou also one of the, this man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the servant of the officer stood there who, who had made fire of coals, for it was cold. And, the, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Then the priest then asked Jesus of, of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I have taught in the synagogue and in the temple where the Jews all, always resort. And in the secret have I said nothing. And you notice the word, the synagogue, you won't find that word in the Old Testament either. Right? Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, which I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I have said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the, the high priest so? And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas or Ananias had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. And they said therefore unto him, Art thou not also one of art thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then one of the servants of the high priest, being, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden? Now, hold on, y'all. Do y'all see what's something wrong? If somebody cut your ear off and drew a sword and cut your ear off, you're going to know what the person who cut your ear off looked like. I'm just saying. You ain't gonna know. You're gonna ask, are you one of them? Nah, man, you were like, hold on, man. You the one that cut my ear off. You was with him. You cut my ear off. Anyway, I'm just saying. Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was when early. And they themselves went not into judgment hall lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. <laughs> oh, do y'all see that? We way over in chapter 18. How are you eating the Passover early in the morning? You already ate the, Jesus and the disciples already ate the Passover. Judas already went out. Remember, because they said it was night. So if that was the Passover, how is it now early? See, see? And it was early. So this is like the morning. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not in the judgment hall. Why? Lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover. How are you going to eat the Passover when the Passover was supposed to have been ate that night, the night before? Explain that, y'all. See, whoever wrote this stuff, you see how all the mistakes they made? The 
this wasn't written by the most high. First of all, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is not the Passover. And the Passover is not the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Remember also, there shall be nothing of the Passover left till the morning. If anything was left in the morning, it was supposed to be what? Burnt by fire. So how is it that they led Jesus from Caiaphas unto the Hall of Judgment, and it was early? Remember, because we just read Judas went out at night. And after the disciples left, they left at night. But now it's early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but they might eat the Passover. So how are you going to eat the Passover again when the Passover is already gone? You shouldn't be eating the Passover right now. Let's go back to Exodus. Let's go back to Exodus. 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 Chapter 12. Oops, spelled it wrong. Ooh, we are. Uh, let's get this. Remember, and they said, keep it as an ordinance forever. Okay? This is the ordinance that they should keep forever. So let's get it. Uh, where was that? Oh, here it is. And ye shall let nothing of it, verse 10, Exodus 12, 10, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which was rain early, which was raineth of it until the morning, shall be burnt with fire. So you know how to put the. So how are you eating the Passover in the morning? And when you go back to them, Jesus, them. Let's go back to uh, Exodus chapter twelve. I mean, excuse me, uh, John 12. Jesus already ate that at Passover. Right? See? Let's go back to 12. That was chapter 18. John 18. Well, we just read that. See? Let's read it. Um. Oh, by the way, y'all, did y'all see this? Look at this, y'all. I missed this. So all the other one says after two days, and then it's the Passover, right? This one says, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where is that? So which was it? Was it two days, y'all? Or was it six days? Y'all see this right here? Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which he had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him supper. And Martha served, but and there when Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took they the Mary a pound of ointment and the sprinkler. So this says two days. The other one says after two days. Jesus, this is six days. So which one is right? See, this, this is after two days. The other one said, so I'm telling y'all. And then that's when Judas got upset, right? With the ointment thing right here, right? And now, let's keep reading. Let's keep going down. Oh, sorry. The 13th. 13. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew his hour was come, he said to depart unto the world, having loved his own, he loved his own, and 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 supper being ended, the devil have now entered into Judas and Sarah. So they already ate here. And then Jesus went and washed, you know, he washed with the towel, did all washed their feet, and did all that stuff, right? Then we're gonna come down, right? And it says it was night. 
I shouldn't have to go through all this with y'all again. But here it is. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. So now, now John 18, now it's early. So we talking about, so this, the feast of the Passover, or the Passover was way over with. So how is it that on John 18, verse 28, way down here, after the crop crew and all that stuff, how are you still eating the Passover? Then led they Jesus sat to, from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I'm done with this one. All right. Okay. So. Okay, we'll make this bigger. Take my glasses off. And now, I hope y'all have seen. Now, I could have made this one longer too because I got some other things I could have showed, but I don't want to, this is this, long enough. I think y'all got the picture. I already, see, I already know it myself. The 14th day of the month is what? At evening is when the Passover is supposed to be killed. You're supposed to roast it. You're supposed to roast it and then that night, and then eat it that night. So you kill it, dress it, and then you roast it, and then you're gonna you you go you're gonna make it with haste, right? And you're gonna have bitter herb and unleavened bread because you ain't gonna have time for the the yeast to rise, right? There was no wine, there was nothing to dip in. That was not part of the Passover, and you were supposed to eat it, right? With your loin, with your girded, with your clothes on, and your shoes on your staff, because you're supposed to be like, because when you know the most I knew that that night, later on that night, early later on that night, what we call early in the morning, that they, the Pharaoh was gonna come and they're gonna be out, moving out. But on the fifteenth day, they they was gonna celebrate, have a holy convocation, which is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The first, the fourteenth of the month is what the Passover. And the next day is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, first day of Holy Convocation, and on the seventh day of Holy Convocation. It's really plain and simple. And also, the first month of the year is a bee, and this is the springtime, which is now. And that's why I said Happy New Year. But the churches are still following the pagan system. They're celebrating Jesus' birthday on December the 25th, and that's why I'm going to get to the other gods before Jesus. There's another but a Greek god. That's all he is, one and another, the newest one on the block. I'm not going to go show you that the J is the newest letter in the alphabet. And then some people call him Yeshua because he was black, giving him a black color. I don't care what color you make him, blue, black, or green, Yeshua, Yahuwah, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him. It's the same for, for Gospels. Same story about him. The Most High never spoke of him. He came and did everything against the Most High. Matter of fact, let me show y'all this. Let me show y'all this. Let's go back. Let's go back. He didn't do things for the Most High. He did things against the Most High. Let's go to Matthew. Let me show y'all again, because y'all didn't watch my other video. Matthews, chapter five. Okay. Let's get down to it. Okay, here we go, right here. Now, did Moses have a law? Or was the law given to the most given to Moses by the most high? Right? And it says this right here. For verily, he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not to come to destroy, but fulfill. But he that's exactly what he's doing, though. See, whoever wrote this knows exactly what they did. He just broke all the ordinances of the um of the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread. For verily I say unto you, 
to heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle or title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. It's double talk. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom. But Jesus, you did that. But whosoever shall be do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's read, let's read some of the things that Jesus did. This is Jesus speaking. Ye have heard that it was said of, of them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that who is there who is angry with your brother. So, hold on a second. Who of old said that? Thou shalt not kill. Who is them of old? Shall they try to put the old, can I say Old Testament? That's why you know who wrote this. He said he's the New Testament, and they call him Old Testament, old. No. That, that wasn't old. That came from the Most High, Jesus. It wasn't them who said that. It was the Most High who said, thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you, verse 22, that whosoever is angered with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say in it to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the consul. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Wow. So now are you changing the law? Yes, you are. Who are you to change the law? The Most High didn't say this. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, there rememberest that thy brother has ought against thee. Leave there thy, there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. For first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and, the, and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Well, well, hold on a second. Why would you agree with your adversary? Agree with your adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. How stupid is this? You're going to agree with your adversary because you're scared that he might deliver thee to the judge. And then the judge deliver thee to the officer. And the officer cast you in prison. I thought that you... You agree with your officer because the officer come and get you, right? And then you go to the judge. And then if the judge put a judgment against you, then you cast into prison. But are you not going to agree with your adversary? That's foolishness. A person is against you, and I, yeah, I agree with you. Really? Anyway, let's keep going. Verily I say unto you, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Ye have heard that it was said of them by old time, thou shalt not commit it. No, Steve. Who is old? Are you calling the most high old? Because it wasn't them of old time. The most high gave Moses these laws to give to the children of Israel. These are his laws. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it far from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. Now, hold on. Ain't that stupid too? Because your body. So, you mean, tell me, if I, if I pluck my eye out right now and cut off my arm, that means when my spirit is left and I'm ready to go to hell, I'm going to go to hell without my arm and one of my eyes because I plucked it out while I was alive. So when my spirit goes to hell, whatever, my, my inner man goes to hell, you mean to tell me if I cut my arm off here, did I have a cut off arm in hell? And if I cut off one of my feet or one of my legs? So if I cut off both of my legs and only when I go to hell, my spirit going to be, my spirit going to have no legs. You see how foolish this is? And if that right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it far from thee. 
Y'all, how many Christians are doing this out here? How many of y'all plucking your eyes out and casting off your hands and cutting off your hands? But it's proper for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. Really? So, I mean, people start cutting off body parts. I guess their body parts won't make it into the hell fire. <laughs> I didn't say it. This is what they're saying. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a right of the word. Who, uh, who said that? That was part of the law. But I say unto you, whoever to cause for fortification, causing her to commit adultery, whosoever shall marry her, that is divorced, committed adultery. That's a lie too. Go back and read the laws of the Most High. That's not what he said. Again, you have heard that it was have been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Okay. All right, y'all. You have heard that it may say nine for nine, two for two, but I say to you that you resist not evil. You have heard that it may said an eye for an eye and two for two, but I say unto you that ye resist not evil. He didn't say to resist evil, y'all. He said resist not evil. How stupid is this? You should resist evil, people. Any kind of evil, you should resist it. But Jesus said not to. But whosoever shall smite thee on the, the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Wow, y'all. Okay. And you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies and bless them that curse you. Do good to them. Does a lion, does a gazelle love a lion? Hmm? If somebody's trying to kill you, are you going to walk up to you and say, I love you? The enemy's trying to kill you, and you might as well just walk out in the open saying, I love you. <laughs> Who's following this today? That's why you got wars against countries, right? What if I, what if the United States said uh, to China or whoever, Russia, whatever, or Russia said to the United States, I love you. They're in the middle of a war and they, 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 the soldiers give up. You know what? Let me read this scripture. We're going to start following Jesus. He's going to throw your hands up and then say, I love you. Love my enemy. I know you can persecute me. I know you're going to torture me. I know you're going to waterboard me. I know you're going to give me the shock treatment and all that mess. Cut my fingers off and pull my toenails out. I love you anyway. Anyway, y'all, I'm not going to read no more. I guess y'all get the point. To those who will get the point, some of y'all going to be offended. But you need to be, if you're offended, then you need to be. Because if your eyes haven't been opened after all the videos I put out, I don't know how more to open your eyes. I'm not trying to do this to be mean. I'm trying to do this to wake people up, especially my people that look like me. I'm really, really trying to, trying to wake them up because we are truly lost. Our people on the church following all this stuff and we can't see. We don't read. Everybody's going to buy their Easter clothes, buy their jelly beans, Easter bags, Easter basket. Peter Cottontail hopping down the body trail of the bunny trail next week. All that's going to take place next week. Or this week coming up. I tried to prove it to you. I tried to show it to you. 
So now it's on you. I will do the salvation one sometime, but I'm gonna start getting back to some of my other things I used to do before, right? Start getting back to some gardening and some other videos, financial videos and other things as well. But only reason I'm putting these videos out because it's the time of the year. I did the last time because it was the time of the year. You know, I did, uh, I also did the ones on basically uh, who we are and that we're not from Africa. I did those videos too as well because it was what, February, so-called Black History Month. I did those videos. So you can go back and watch those videos if you like. And it's there, like I said, I'm here to just wake the people up to the truth because this is the Truth Seeking Network. All right, y'all. So I think that's it for this video. I'm out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.